Welcome back. If you're just joining us, I have you with me, the presidential candidate of the African Action Congress, Omoyele Shore, and we're talking about his plans for Nigeria. Um, I was going through some of the things, a few of your interviews in the past, and you had, um, and of course, your plans. Yes. And there's a lot of promises <laughs> that you've made. And a few of them caught my attention. You said something about the minimum wage, yes. increasing it to 100,000 naira, investing $3.6 billion in infrastructure. Housing you want to do a mortgage dollar. plan up to 2 million naira for Nigerians. Workers, yeah. Workers. And, uh, where is this money coming from, first of all? $3.6 billion. Yes. Where is this money coming from? Uh, it's coming from the Nigerian economy. What has been happening for a long time is that we've been spending billions servicing greedy, pe greedy people. And I'll give you an example. The banking sector in four years gave 5.3 trillion naira, about 5.3 to 5.7 trillion naira to businessmen, only 150 of them, maybe about 350 of them. They ended up as bad loans, and then they created Amcon to clean up the mess. Imagine if that had been, you know, invested in the housing sector, infrastructure. You know, we are not talking about the five billion dollars we lose to corruption every year, right? But in case that is a problem, I mean, that's difficult to understand. Think about what we could do with our taxes. We are the lowest. We have the lowest tax rates uh, in West Africa, even on the African continent. We're doing at seven. I mean, seven percent. So how are you going to change that? You, know, you change that by being the leader of the country by How? implementing, no, you know, you, collecting, collection of taxes is not, we're not increasing taxes. We're just saying that if you're an employer and you deduct taxes of your workers, you must remit it to the federal government and that would take us directly to eight to nine trillion naira. Let me explain how that happens. You see, you see with the Buhari regime, they said they collected five trillion naira in taxes. What is the budget of Nigeria? 8.8 .8 trillion. So if you did just a little bit more work, you can cover the entire budget with just taxes alone. You are not talking about oil and oil and it's because for me that's lazy economy. It's just there for you to collect. But the same people said they recovered money from EFCC. Jam is returning, you know, uh, profit for the first time. You have customs. All of these people combined together, if they are putting in their revenue as they should, we have more than enough. Let me, we talk about minimum wage. What is the minimum wage of Nigeria compared to our GDP? Our GDP is about $500 billion, yeah, dollars, and the minimum wage is about $1.5 billion. It's not even up to a percentage of our... And when you increase worker salaries, or you pay what I call living wage, the investment goes into the country, you know. People invest in you know, the local economy, they buy things. If you have a shoemaker who is buy, you buying shoe from or you're paying shoe from, now you go out there for two. Then he hires more people. Many, That's many how, people have always said that you know, these promises are always easier to make it's when, not easier before to, you get in. I'm yeah. going somewhere. Yeah. And I like to ask a question a lot to people who are running for office yeah. because people have always said that one of our biggest issues with all of this yeah. is our civil service. And you can't change that the day you get into office by just increasing salaries and expecting things to flow. No, no, no. How do you fix the civil service in concordance so, with this? Yeah, so this is interesting. You know, we have a civil service that's bloated. But it's not bloated because there are civil servants. It's bloated by corruption. The police, you know, found over 80,000 fake police officers. I think about two years ago. That was publicly reported. So if you use technology to weed out all the fake ghost workers from the system. You have a civil service that is real, organic. And what we're saying is that if you pay them their minimum wage, that is a living wage, they start working the way they should work. The ones that are older and not productive, you can buy them out of the civil service. What I mean by out is that if you work, if you work for 25 years, I can give you a buyout opportunity to say, you know, instead of doing another five years, you know, we pay you off, you leave, you enjoy your retirement, and we hire new people, we train them, we professionalize them, and they become people who are familiar with modern civil service rules. I'm not saying that civil service is the only way you can hire people, but people often forget that most of even the private sector work that we need to be done in terms of regulation, in terms of what support even the private sector comes from the civil service. What, about, just the, talk what, as about, what about the states? How, how do the states play into this? Because, I mean, if you're going to increase the minimum wage, yes. the states have to be paying something as well. Of course. A lot of the state governments where, can't even pay where do you think, what we have now. How do you, do you fix that? Where do you think the states 
get the money to pay security votes? Is it not the same states that can't pay civil service? You know, so let me tell you, you have Kirby State. Kirby State made almost 100 billion naira from growing rice. They're selling rice even through Lagos. If you go to the federal government every month to collect the handout that it collects about 4 billion naira per month, if you're growing rice, if you're creative, you make 100 billion, which one would you rather do? Is to make the states productive, you know, and, you know, make them competitive. Because even laws in this country that are supposed to be implemented by the federal, they are, they are state laws. But people often forget that the states can grow and can participate in the growth of the economy. But when you start voting the same kind of characters into state as we have in the federal government now, what do you expect? You just have rent seekers collecting minimum, you know, they're collecting their own, uh, what they call security votes. There's never been a time in this country that states, you found a state governor who didn't pay his security votes. But they don't pay minimum, uh, they don't pay salaries because they don't want to pay salaries, not because I, there's no money. So many of the states have drawn from Paris Club, they've drawn from a lot of reforms, you know, slush funds that Buhari gave to them. They still didn't pay salaries, not because the money wasn't there, but because they are interested in stealing the money that's meant for workers. And how it's do, up to the workers to hold them to, 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 to account. Yeah, 